TacticalGamer.com here, uh, starting a, another series on scripting basics, uh, doing a few videos, actually in advance of doing a series on ad action, um, but this should be useful for many, many things. Um, so hopefully stick through this. This is a little bit dry, but uh, it's pretty much essential to actually understanding kind of what's going on if you uh, are brand new to scripting and this sort of thing. Hopefully this will help out. Um, basically what I'm going to go through here is these elements right here. So let's jump right into variable types. And let's get a brand new window here somewhere. Okay. So different variable types. Basically a variable is uh, any name that you can think of. Um, and then you can use that name to store different um, values in. So there are different types of data that you can store in the values of a variable. Okay, um, there's numbers, there's sets of characters. Um, let's go through them. One is object. Okay, an object is basically for our purposes here, all we need to worry about is it's an object that you might place in the editor. Um, an object is a bigger concept than that, and uh, I'm not going to get into that, but anything that you place, like a ammo box, uh, a HESCO bag, or anything that you place in the Arma 3 editor that you can name is an object, a game logic, a module, anything. Okay, so an object is referred to by its name, and its name will generally have to start um, with just a, a plain character. Um, it could be a number, I believe, or maybe that's not a problem, but there are variable names that will be invalid because the game is already using um, that variable. Like, you couldn't put down um, uh, an object and then name it time because the game already uses the variable time to track how long the simulation has been going on. So there'll be times where you might come up with a variable name that you can't use. You could say my truck. Uh, it's probably not going to be used uh, by anything else. Okay, truck one, truck two. Anything. Anyway, so that's it. Objects are referred to in that in that way. Okay. Next one would be strings. And strings are basically just a collection of ASCII characters. And that's all there. Uh, there is no operations that you could do on them in the sense that like with numbers you could add, subtract, multiply. The only thing you can do with strings is connect two together. Um, so a string is always put in quotation marks. So between these two quotation marks, I could have a collection of characters. Okay? And there we go. My notepad plus plus, I already put it in my last quotation mark. So this collection of characters, that's all it is. Um, the two, even if I had a string, with uh, this, okay, um, I couldn't do math with it if I had two strings. So let's say if I had A equals 2 and then B equals 3, C equals A plus B, my result would not be 5, okay? Um, my result would be, because it would just add those two strings together. That's all it would do. It's the only operator that works on strings is the plus. Okay, so that should be simple to understand. Um, if you, within a string, 
if you wanted to put in quotation marks, you have to use uh, double quotation marks. So let's say if I wanted to say, put in a message, um, and uh, let's say a hint on the screen that had quotation marks in it, uh, and the message might be, For whatever reason, we wanted to put job in quotation marks, your job. Um, so I would have to double up those quotation marks there in order to get get that to work. Okay, because otherwise it would look at a single quotation mark and go, oh, well, the string is over. Okay, so that's strings. Numbers should be pretty straightforward. A number. Uh, can be any number, okay? And it's possible to add them, divide them, uh, subtract them, you know, multiply them, and all sorts of other mathematical operations on them, okay? So, pretty straightforward. Boolean is either yes or no, right? But we only use, uh, there's two different ways of using a Boolean. Um, there is the true false, <coughs> or there's the zero, one. Both, I believe, are valid. Maybe it depends on the context. Um, however, most of the time you just stick with true or false, right? If you've um, used any of the scripting commands where you put in true or false, that's basically it. It only allows one of those two values. You don't need to put it in quotation marks. It's not, not an actual um, string, okay? We just refer to the value of true, but I think it takes up far less memory to use a Boolean if you only have two options that you're trying to store in a value. Um, public variables, from what I've noticed, are not able to be, uh, when I'm creating public variables, I have to put true in quotation marks um, because I'm actually just passing a string and using the value true as a string to, so that I can easily read it and understand what it is. I've had troubles with uh, passing just plain Boolean values uh, through a public variable. Don't know why. Uh, obviously, somebody more educated than me might know what I'm running into. Um, anyway, array. Here's the one that gets really tricky for the add actions and stuff. Um, what is an array? Array is a collection of any of these other types of values stored in one value. So, let's say I had an array. Let's go with numbers first. Better label it say I have my scores. So I wanted to record all my scores from the last week of gaming. Okay, I can store an array in between these square brackets. Okay, let's say my first score was 12, 13. Actually, let's go over to this. Actually, no, I'll do this. 16. 56. There we go. Okay. So basically, I can then extract my specific scores out of here. I can easily count how many games I've recorded by, you know, saying something like, uh, number of scores, number of scores equals count my scores. And that would return three would then do the same thing as typing in three because I've got one, two, three elements in the array that I've named my scores. Simple enough, right? Let's go over to here and uh, the elements in an array have an index. And so the first element in an array would be uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, <clears throat> so this is just a way of visualizing an array and its index. So 
And what did I have over here before? I had 12, 34, and 56. So 12, 34, and 56. Okay. If I wanted to know what my score is, I could ask, um, basically, what is my score? Select zero. And that's going to say, oh, well, at the index zero in this array, the value is 12, right? My score select two is going to be 56. So that's how you can extract specific values out of a score. My element zero equals my scores select zero. And that would return 12. My element zero would then be equal to the number 12. I could store uh, any type of variable in here. As a matter of fact, um, so I could store strings in there, objects, Boolean values. You can have different multiple data types inside your um, array. Now, uh, it's possible finally to nest an array. So if I go back to here, let's say I wanted to nest uh, an array. Actually, this element in the array wasn't just one game. It was the collection of games I had, let's say, had a bit of a tournament. And I needed to know my overall score, but I also needed to record my individual scores. So it's the same thing as doing sort of this if you're used to um, a spreadsheet program. Same thing as maybe equal to 15 plus, 15 plus 4. I got two scores of 15, uh, and then I got a score of 4 in my last game. So you can see that my second element is an array itself. So this could be, if I wanted to write that out, same as this. Now instead of the 34, I'm just going to have another array. 15, 15, and 4. So I have an array within an array. No problem with doing that. If I wanted to know, let's say, how many scores I had in the second array, Okay. So number of games in tournament equals my scores or count and then my scores um, select So that would count the number of elements that are in the second element of my scores. I know it's confusing. Okay, I could also just um, find pull any individual one of these scores once I knew that there was three elements in this uh, nested array. That is my element one in my scores. Then I could say. Two, okay, so my score of game two of the tournament, tournament equals my scores, select one, which is the tournament, select two, and then that would give me my 15. Okay, I think that covers all the basics of the variable types and variable names. There are some naming conventions and that that I'll get into later. But that's the end of this video. Take care. It's Uncle from TacticalGamer.com. Catch you soon.